This method is based on a book that I wrote in 2002 and published on Amazon in 2010 by the name of Building the Better Guitar Scale. I've made some changes to the text to clarify unnecessary complicated language and to make it as clear and concise as possible. You can find a link to the booklet in the description. To build all diatonic scales and modes, we really only need to study the major scale. All other scales and modes will fall neatly into place once we understand how the major scale is constructed. To begin, we need to look at some patterns that outline the major scale. Each of these patterns starts the major scale on a different scale note, or scale degree. Pattern 1 starts on the first note, or scale degree 1. Pattern 2 starts on the second note, or scale degree 2. Pattern 3 starts on scale degree 3, and on up through 7. We'll deconstruct these patterns, learn how they are built, and then be able to reconstruct them ourselves on the fly in any position on the fretboard. This is the essence of improvising melodies and playing guitar solos. Taking a closer look at these seven scale patterns, we see that they are constructed only of three vertical finger shapes. Let's label these shapes X, Y, and Z. These shapes are the basis from which we'll construct all of our larger scale patterns. Notice that they use three fingers on each string for left hand consistency. This ensures that we don't have any awkward shifts when moving from one string to the next. This left-hand consistency also translates into right-hand consistency for classical guitarists, since we now have a predictable repeating right-hand pattern of I-M-I-M-I-M. -I 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 Looking at our seven scale patterns, we can see certain rules emerge with regard to how these shapes appear horizontally on the fretboard. For example, you'll notice that shape Y never comes directly before shape X. Similarly, shape Z never comes directly before shape Y. Another rule to note is the grouping of the shapes. They seem to come in pairs or even threes. The only time you ever see a solitary shape is if it is on one of the outside strings. Without going into too much details of the reason for the shape order, a larger pattern of finger shapes emerges. Let's say we had a guitar with an infinite number of strings. The order of our finger shapes would repeat every seven strings, with the order of the shapes being XXX, YY, CZ. The finger shapes will always appear in this order without variation. Since we only have six strings on the guitar, well, most of us anyway, we never get to see the entire pattern on the neck. Nevertheless, we are always playing some portion of this larger pattern. Comparing our infinite guitar to the original seven patterns, it's obvious that their vertical positions on the neck don't match up. So how do we determine on which frets to place these patterns? Right now, the actual fret number doesn't matter, so don't worry about that. What does matter is the fret position relative to your first note. Meaning, what happens to the shape after you've already played the first one? There are only two simple rules for adjusting the vertical placement of your finger shapes. Rule number one. When progressing from shape X to shape Y, the first finger shifts up one fret. Rule number two. When progressing from the third string to the second string, the first finger shifts up one fret. Note that we are shifting up one fret in pitch, not up in reference to the diagram. You'll probably want to pause the video here and either screenshot these rules or write them down somewhere you want something to refer to when you're doing your own practice. Let's look at these two rules in action. In every instance of shape X being followed by shape Y, the first finger has shifted up one fret. Similarly, with every move from the third string to the second string, the first finger moves up one fret. Take note of pattern two. In this pattern, you can see that on the third string, we have shape X, while on the second string, we have shape Y. In this instance, the first finger has shifted up two frets. This is not a violation of the rules, but an accumulation of them. Because we are moving from X to Y and third to second string, we shift up one fret for each one of those transitions. Looking at our seven patterns again, we can see that the finger shape orders 
and their relative fret positions are easily predictable now that we understand the rules that they follow. So instead of memorizing every one of these patterns, we can now build them on the fly. In order to build the pattern, we need to know only two things about it. One, the scale degree on which we are starting the pattern. Two, the first two shapes of that pattern. Here is a chart outlining the first two finger shapes and scale degree for each overall pattern. Again, you may want to pause the video here and take a screenshot or write this down. Once you understand how the patterns are constructed, this is the only thing you need to memorize to be able to play every scale and mode in every position. Note that both scale degree 1 and 5 start with XX. You'll have to remember that scale degree 5 starts with 3 X's, whereas scale degree 1 starts with only 2. Let's do a few examples to see how it all fits together. Say we want to play a G major scale starting on the first scale degree. We find G on the sixth string of our fretboard and then look at the chart and remember the horizontal ordering of the shapes. The pattern for scale degree 1 starts with two X shapes. Play those first two shapes. Next comes shape Y, and with it, the rule to shift up one fret when moving from shape X to shape Y. Now play the second shape Y. After that, we move to shape Z, but shifting up a fret because we're moving from the third string to the second string. And then end the pattern with your second Z shape. As you can see, the pattern we just built is identical to the original pattern one. This works anywhere up and down the fretboard. If you wanted to play this pattern in the key of A rather than G, just slide the whole thing up to the fifth fret. If you wanted to play in F-sharp, slide it down to the 2nd fret. This is completely movable. Let's try B-flat starting on the 3rd scale degree. The 3rd degree of B-flat is D. Find D on your fretboard and once again, look at the chart and remember the horizontal order of the shapes. The pattern for scale degree 3 starts with Y and Z. Play those first two shapes. Z is followed by the second Z, and then an X. Notice we haven't shifted up. All our finger shapes are still on the ninth fret. Up to this point, we haven't come across a situation that requires a shift up. Our next finger shape, however, is moving from the third string to the second string. So we play our next X shape up one fret, and follow that with another X. We'll do one more for scale degree 2 in the key of F sharp. The second scale degree of F sharp is G sharp. Find G sharp on your fretboard, look at the chart, and remember the horizontal order of the shapes. The pattern for scale degree 2 starts with Z and X. Play those first two shapes. Next, play shape X followed by another shape X. Here at the third string, we have shape X followed by shape Y, so we shift up a fret and we're moving from the third string to the second string, so we shift up another fret for a two fret shift total. Now play the second shape Y. Up to this point, we've begun all our scale patterns on the sixth string, but what happens if we need to begin a scale on the fifth or fourth strings? The answer is to simply follow the same rules you've already been applying. In this example, we have a C major scale beginning on the 3rd fret of the 5th string. We're starting with shapes XX since we're beginning the scale on the 1st degree, and then just shifting up at the appropriate times. All the same rules apply regardless of what string you start on. Each of the patterns we've been constructing tie into each other like sequences of DNA in a genome. Look at this diagram and note how pattern 1 on the 5th string is virtually identical to pattern 5 on the 6th string. When we overlay two patterns like this, we can see that all these are actually subsections of a single larger pattern that encompasses the entire fretboard and repeats infinitely. This is what I call the grand unification pattern. This will be the subject of another video. However, as you practice constructing your own patterns, you'll start to see for yourself how they all tie into one another, and you can construct the grand unification pattern yourself.
We can also apply our patterns to play all the natural modes. Each major scale pattern is also one of the seven modes. This chart shows each pattern and the mode associated with it. Starting a major scale on the first degree is the Ionian mode, which is just the major scale itself. Starting the major scale on the second degree is the Dorian mode. The third degree is the Phrygian mode, fourth is Lydian, fifth is Mixolydian, sixth is Aeolian or the natural minor scale, and seventh is Locrian. If we want to play the Dorian mode starting on the first degree of that mode, we simply play pattern ZX. Similarly, we play the Mixolydian mode starting on the first degree by playing pattern XXX. An important point to note is that all these pattern mode associations all begin starting on the first degree of that mode. There is a method for starting patterns on different scale degrees of modes, but I want to keep this video as short and concise as possible. This process is more academic than practical anyway, so I'll cover that in another video. The natural minor scale is simply the Aeolian mode. Just use pattern 6 of the major scale. That's it. There's nothing else to it. I don't cover the harmonic and melodic minor scales in this method since they are non-diatonic, meaning they have notes that are altered in some way. However, once you've got a solid grasp of the Aeolian mode, changing it to harmonic or melodic becomes much easier. Improvising along to backing tracks is the easiest way to make this method second nature to you. There are thousands of them all over YouTube, and they usually tell you what key they are in. When improvising, be sure to play all over the neck. Don't just stay in one position. Try changing keys and modes spontaneously. If a backing track is in G major, try G Lydian or Mixolydian. If it's in A minor, try A Dorian or A Phrygian. Listen closely to how the mode alters the feel of the melodies you are playing. By building scale patterns as you play, you'll achieve a greater command of the scales much more quickly than sheer memorization of finger placements. By thinking on your feet and improvising, you'll receive the benefit of continuous mental reinforcement while simultaneously improving your musicianship. In this video, we've covered the three finger shapes, the horizontal and vertical ordering of those shapes, step-by-step -step instructions on how to build the patterns, building patterns on different strings, modes, and the minor scales. The focus of this tutorial has been to enable guitarists to create a visual mental map of the fretboard in a clear and simple way. It isn't designed to teach music theory. Some of you will be wondering how to know what specific notes fall on which degrees of which scales, what are key signatures, and so on. There are a million other places you can find that information, and there's no point in me repeating that here. Having said that, experience has shown me that students who have struggled with music theory in the past have greatly increased their understanding of it by using this method. You now have the tools to build any scalar mode in any position on the fretboard. Good luck in your practice, and thanks for watching.